imagine coming from a school, a school where you only focus on memorizing things, limited sports, limited extracurricular activities, and no discussion about how to deal with stress or mental issues. <sighs> to an international school, not an ordinary international school, but the best in the whole country. Seems pretty impossible, right? Well, this was my predicament. Studying at an international school comes with great responsibilities. As till now, your abilities and your skills were judged on the basis of how well you memorize facts and present them in a meaningful manner. But now, you have to use all those facts practically and throughout the process, develop life skills such as leadership because you're working in a group, time management because you have deadlines, and of course, cost effective because at least this time, money is not limitless. Life is extremely amazing in international schools because now you're free from the forceful memorization. You can actually work on the skills which you need for life, such as critical thinking skills, how to deal with failures, etc., etc., etc. Specifically for me, I imagined life in an international school would be like a typical Bollywood movie. Further, all girls just phone up on the moment he sets his foot on campus. Well, the guys were jealous, including me, including some of you all too, I guess. Plus five minutes of the movie, he somehow wins basketball, debate, swimming, every single competition. Well, not to mention how perfectly he sings and dances while attractively playing the guitar. So I prepared myself, prepared myself with all the expectations. And you all can just guess what could have really happened. But don't worry. My expectations were crushed, but not my hopes, because I simply realized life, life isn't as straightforward as I had assumed it to be. Matter of fact, I was late an hour and 20 minutes, so I guess God forgot to play that Bollywood scene in my life. It was a challenge. The new culture around me, the new people from all over the world who would one day become my friends, who do speak English, but with different accents. And there's a really interesting thing to point out here is that Every country has its own accent of speaking English. For example, when I first came to school, I heard an American guy saying, hey, could you pass me the bottle of water, please? Which was pretty understandable to me. But the following day, I heard a British guy saying, hey, could you pass me the bore of water? <laughs> Which I didn't really understand. And I was standing there saying, hey, Lou, could you pass me the bottle of water? <laughs> and yeah, this was my real accent when I first came to school. I was in a school that teaches you to be internationally minded, think creatively, reason critically, and communicate effectively. Trust me, I faced a quadrillion problems in my life, such as not meeting up the expectations, not being able to know what am I still doing wrong after multiple attempts. But one precious thing, one precious thing I had was a winning mindset. Because I was ready, ready to push my limits, speaking correct English, an American accent, managing my dressing sense, taking part in sports, proving my mettle in all of them, I did them all. And one more interesting thing to point out here is that the new place gave me opportunities. And there's a really special quote in my mother tongue, Hindi, which I, which I would love to share with you all. Bhagwan sabko ek mokka zarur deta hai saksham banne ka. Ab wo hum pe hota hai, hum kitna saksham bante hai. Which in English means, God gives one opportunity to everyone. Now it's in our hand. We either use it or we lose it. I just, I just lost my self-confidence because the people were not my people. They speak different language. But believe me, just because of little bit of self-confidence, I made it. You are and will never be the only person who struggles in your life. Millions of students have done the same thing and millions of students will be doing the same thing. Hence, it would have been a decision made in a matter of seconds for me to go back to India and pursue my studies there, in my comfort zone. But I never did that, because until one doesn't come out of his comfort zone, his achievement will be constant. And Neil Donald said, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And personally, I don't want to die as a minimum guy with minimum skill set. But maybe that's why I decided to join the Indian Armed Forces after completing my graduation from Tashkent International School.
and well, no, 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 not because my dad is in the Indian Army and talks a lot about the life in the forces and I'm forced to listen to all his made up, I mean, real stories. <laughs> because I'm not interested in being a follower. I always wanted to be a leader. And the armed forces provide you the opportunity to lead over 1,200 troops at the age of 21 in the service of your nation. Well, one day, a reporter asked, how did it feel to fail a thousand times? The great scientist Edison replied, well, I didn't fail a thousand times. The invention of a light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Hence, we can learn a lot from our failures and our successes. Because a person who has failed can tell you better the real cost of success. But I feel Edison is too old to be considered. Well, who knows if that century was too easy for everyone? Every basketball player or fan must have looked at Michael Jordan and thought, I will be like him one day. But all-star Michael Jordan didn't even get selected in his high school basketball team. And how did he do it? Maybe because he didn't limit himself? Maybe because his consistent power was greater than his quitting power? Well, you all are the winners of your own life. And I'm not that old to give you all a piece of advice, but after spending 18 years on this planet, I can assure you one thing very firmly. If he can do it, I can do it. If he cannot do it, I still can do it, because I'm the controller of my own potential. But why do people even quit? Maybe because they feel they're not made for it? Maybe because they feel it's a long process? Well, I used to get these questions a lot. And I asked one simple question to myself. Why did I even start? And surprisingly, the answer is right in front of me. Because I wanted to. Well, not my friends, not my parents, but I wanted to do it. You get one chance in form of life. Why do you want to waste it by overthinking? In the end, I would love to conclude my speech by saying one quote which Zig Ziglar said. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Thank you very much.